Hi, Coach uh, Greg Rockash from uh, the Gazette in Billings. Um, maybe you can just talk logistically how this is going to work, because I know um, Washington has a bowl game coming up on the 26th, I think. Uh, what's going to be your plan going forward the next uh, you know, three weeks or so? Yeah, so as, as, as we move forward, this week is, uh, is the last week of a contact period. And as I mentioned before, um, you know, I could, I could have come in here and done this press conference and left and hit the road. My most important recruiting job are the young men that are here. And so I want to make sure that I get the opportunity to meet with them. When that's done, we're going to prioritize the in-state Montana commits. I should be able to get to most of those young men uh, through the remainder of the week. Um, at that point, uh, basically it would be a recruiting weekend starting on Friday. So I'm going to, I'm going to travel back to Seattle and uh, I, will, I will coach the bowl game with Boise State. And so uh, I'll, I'll, we'll have practice on Saturday and Sunday. I'll be working the phones, putting my staff together, communicating with the uh, recruits that we have committed to us and ones that we're trying to convince to come to Montana State, um, as well as, as, uh, as you know, doing all kinds of a million other things that I'm sure you can appreciate. Um, but that's, uh, and, then, and as we move forward, it's dead on Sunday night. And so all I can do is phone recruit anyway. So I'll be able to go to, you know, do that during my time in preparation, helping, helping Huskies get ready for their bowl game. Um, it was an honor to be asked to do that. Um, and, um, and so I'm looking forward to having one last opportunity to coach the young men there. And then as we get to around the first of the year, we'll kind of we'll kind of hunker down here. I'll have my staff set. We'll get one day Bozeman and, and uh, bury ourselves in the bunker and figure out what the first 90 days of this thing's going to look like. Coach, what do you think the most important thing is you bring to this program? I think energy, integrity, and, and ability to connect with players are the three things that I would say. I'm always going to be honest, 100% honest with them. I'm going to hold them to a high standard. and. Uh, but I think the energy and the ability to connect with these kids is one thing that is, is going to uh, really help me in this first 90 days in establishing uh, the type of program that I'm going to have here. Coach Coulter, Nolan, Skyline Sports. Can you talk about just the process of this whole thing? When did this first land on your radar and the, just the, how fast it all happened? Can you just talk about that? And just yeah, it's been like very fast. Um, so, uh, you know, when, once the job was open, it was, uh, it was trying to find a way to gain traction, you know. Um, this is a place that I've been very interested in for a while and uh, really respected the job that Coach Ash and his staff had done here and knew that this was a good place for a number of reasons. Number one, I mean, this, this is a tier one Carnegie institution. I mean, that's totally different than anybody else we're recruiting against in the Big Scott. And we have a tremendous product to sell to these young men here. And so I was excited about that part of it. But, um, you know, long story short, it's always about who you know, right? And so I had to find a way to, to get to get uh, Peter Fields and members of the committee to know who I was. And good thing there's the Montana hotline. I got a bunch of friends around the state. Uh, my, my time at Western, uh, those connections have, uh, have paid off for me a little bit. And, uh, and so I, you know, I was kind of, I actually dropped my wife and my daughter off at the Nutcracker in Seattle on Sunday night. And Jory and I were going back to watch a Sunday night football game. My phone rings about 6.30 and it's and Mr. Fields. And he says, uh, hey, would you like to come in tomorrow for an interview? <laughs> tomorrow and uh, it was the best thing that could happen to me. I didn't have to think about anything. I didn't have to stress about anything. I just got on the plane and went and did it. And then uh, for the rest of the week, I wasn't worried about it either because I was traveling around the country recruiting for the dogs. So um, that was kind of how it went down. Coach, what do you think your connections here in Montana will do for you to help you with this, with this program? Well, I think one of the unique things about, about Western when I was there was that you know, probably 90% of the, the guys that I played with ended up going into education. And most of them were teachers and coaches and are still involved in public education throughout the state, whether they're superintendents or head high school coaches. And so they're going to be guys that are going to be able to give me really good information about the character of the young men that we're, that we're recruiting. They're also going to be able to tell those kids what kind of coach they're going to get. And I think that those lifelong connections, uh, you know, that means something in Montana. A handshake means something, looking somebody in the eye, being one of them. I think I am one of them. And, uh, and I'm not going to lose sight of that. I think that's going to be tremendously important and helpful for us in terms of uh, making the types of strides in recruiting that we want to in the state. Uh, Coach, uh, what's your uh, uh, plan for hiring assistants and will you be uh, retaining any of the current assistants that we have on staff? Yeah, his question was, what is my plan for, for uh, my staff and am I going to retain any current assistants? And so, um, as I mentioned a moment ago, I'm in the process of evaluating the current staff. Uh, it's been less than 48 hours. And so uh, um, that's that's something that as, as you know, we'll inform, uh, we'll inform our players and, uh, and move forward in that direction as we know. I'm in the process of evaluating those guys, and I would anticipate that there will be some that will be retained. And uh, just got to make sure it's the right fit for us 
And uh, we'll, I promise you this, we'll have a first class group of men coaching these boys. Coach Sean McShell with ABC Fox Montana. You touched on Montana State had been on your radar for a little bit. Why was it a good fit and why was this a job that you wanted to go after? Well, I think this, number one, I'm a big sky guy. I mean, I, you know, I've coached in the SEC, I've coached in the Pac-12 a couple different times. I've been on the big stage and I enjoyed it, it was awesome. But at the end of the day, when I really looked at it, I was like, you know, where do I want to be a head coach? This is the level, you know? and a lot of it has to do with my time at, uh, at, at Eastern Illinois in the FCS level. I was there for a year and, and I really kind of got that. This is different than, than the FBS level. That these kids can have a college experience. I can let them do travel abroad. We can do, and you know, we can work around class schedules. It, it's it's what college football was supposed to be, and it's gotten out of hand. And so that's one of the things that really attracted me. The the, the academic profile of this place was very attractive to me because I know the caliber of young men that I can recruit. I think that uh, I love Montana. Deep roots here, and Bozeman's a pretty awesome town. So I think all those things kind of came together for me and, and uh, I feel very, very fortunate to be here. What do you think of the status of the program here at Heritage here? Um, I'd say this, it's not broke. It's not broke. You know, I might need to go in for a tune-up and sometimes all it is is just a, you know, an influx of energy and, and uh, a little different approach. Um, as I mentioned, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Coach Ash and his staff and the, and the work that they've done here. It speaks for itself, really. And so, um, I'm not in here to I'm not in here to do anything but praise them and build on what they've done and try to try to help this place go to the next step. Coach, what uh, can you say will be your expectations or and your demands of your players? We'll have a standard in everything we do, and the standard's the standard. That's it. There's no excuses, no complaining, no defending your actions. You know, we either get it done or we don't, and that starts with me. And, and, and the assistance that I bring in here. And so our, I'm going to have just as high expectation, if not higher, for myself and my coaches than I am for these players. If we lead them the correct way, they'll follow. And, uh, and so you know, we're going to have really high standards, and they're going to be really hard to attain, but we'll be fine. I mean, that's, it's going to be, it's going to be grueling in terms of uh, the mental energy that we've got to put in it, in terms of preparation, because it's, it's not going to be, it, everything that we do is going to be calculated. And it's going to be, it's going to be done with all of us together. You know, so that when, we, when, when the linebacker coach goes into the linebacker room, he was a part of what we decided we were going to be about here. And he's going to be able to, to, to convey that message to our players, and they'll buy in quickly. I think they'll feel the urgency from the head coach all the way down. And uh, I wish we'd go out there right now, to be honest with you. But uh, that's, uh, we'll have to wait a few months for that. You mentioned Coach Delaney, Coach Denny. Can you expand on that a little bit? Just what sort of influence those guys have had on you and how that kind of led you to this point? <clears throat> yeah, well, you know, I, um, one of the things that I really believe is that, you know, my objective here is, 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 is to, to build a team to win. That's what I need to do, okay? But in a bigger picture, I need to, to build these people, these young men for their life. And, and um, you know, that's, that's what Nick and Nick did for me. You know, they, they turned me in from, from a boy to a man. They gave me tough love. Um, you know, Mick, Mick Delaney, you know, I learned how to treat people. You show me somebody in this state that doesn't like him or respect him, there's probably something wrong with them. You know, and uh, Mick Dennehy, all about toughness and connecting to players and, and uh, just, uh, just two really influential good people in my life. Recruiting-wise, what, what's going to be the strategy uh, immediately, and also what, what's, what's going to be kind of the scope of it all? Where are you, where do you guys target just regionally and things like that? So, I think this. I think the Big Sky, the, 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 the footprint of the Big Sky is, is, is expanded tremendously as the, as the league is expanding, but we can't lose sight of that. We've got to win our backyard. You know, we, we're, we're ultimately going to win championships with Montana kids, kids that grew up went to be, want to be Bobcats, understand the history and tradition of this proud program. When we bring people in from out of state, they're going to be able to explain to them what it means to be part of this program, and that's tremendously important to me. First and foremost, home the state. We'll expand into the population bases in the Northwest. You know, anything within a 10, 12 hour drive of here where people can get in a car and be here and come here unofficially on visits and visit here as they're going through Yellowstone and, and you know, stop by and see what Montana State has to offer. I think that's important, important. so that would include you know, uh, the Boise area, the Spokane area, the I-5 corridor in Western Washington where I have strong ties. And then I've recruited uh, um, primarily the Houston area, but in the state of Texas extensively for the last 12 years. 
And so I think that's something that there's been, there's been a lot of inroads made here at MSU, and uh, I think we'll continue to, 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 to reap those benefits because of the connections that I've made there as well. Uh, Coach, what, what uh, pressures will you be under here at Montana State, not uh, just on the football field, but academically as well? Well, I think everything that we do starts with recruiting, right? And so we've got to be very diligent and, and, uh, and do our homework on the young men that we bring here. Their, their degree, that, that piece of paper at the end of the day needs to be more important to them and their family than it is to me. Because if I've got to run them around and take them to class, there's going to be a disconnect. And so um, that's, that's going to be, and it, a short answer is, I have to recruit top-notch young men who are all about getting their degree, they're really good football players. Coach, uh, you mentioned the rivalry with Montana. There's a real hunger here to be more competitive and, and to beat Montana more. What is your approach to that and how do you kind of see uh, how that's going to be done, I guess? Well, we're not going to beat Montana one day a year. We're going to beat Montana every day, and we've got to we've got to go out there and prepare for for you know our first games against the University of Idaho in Moscow, Idaho. I believe is that correct? Okay, that's going home for me. I'm going to have a chip on my shoulder, and I'll make sure those guys are prepared to go. And then we'll take it one game at a time. And if if, uh, if the mojo is right when we get to the brawl of the wild, it'll take care of itself. But we can't be consumed or obsessed with winning that one game. We're about winning championships here, and you know at the end of the day, I hope these guys when this thing's all said and done. We're beating them because they're on our schedule, not because they're there's somebody that there's something that's bigger than they are. Uh, the players under Coach Ash, um, how will you gain their respect? They, they they lost a great coach. I would totally agree with that, and I think that how I'm going to do that is I'm going to gain their trust. You know, I've got it's about it, it's about showing them who I am. It's about reaching out and connecting to them, showing them I care. Coach, I know Peter Fields has mentioned that he expects the program to be not necessarily winning a national title every year, but at least in contention, top 10 rankings. How do the expectations here compare to some of the previous stops at, say, Boise State or in the Pac-12? Yeah, they're right in line. Um, you know, in Boise State, we, they didn't expect us to lose a game. So um, that was interesting. And then, uh, you know, in Florida, that's a little bit of a pressure cooker down there in the SEC. And certainly the University of Washington with the history and tradition of that program, the expectations are high. And that's, that's fine. I want to go somewhere where there's high expectations. And, and I embrace that challenge and, you know, let's go get it. Stylistically, uh, do you have any idea of what you want to do offensively and defensively, scheme-wise? Do you have, have any gauge on that yet? You know, I, I really like what they've been doing around here on offense. I think it's been very productive, and I think that there's a, you know, they've recruited to that system. And so for us to be able to maximize our ability to compete at a high level early, I think we need to, we need to have some continuity there. And so I, I don't think you'll see a ton of changes there. I will be embracing some two-back run game. Um, you know, I want a little bit of attitude play here and there. And then uh, on the defensive side of the ball, you know, we'll, we'll be multiple because we have to be. You know, we'll probably put base out of a 3-4, but most of our nickel package or sub-package stuff is going to be four down. And uh, that's, that's the nature of this league. Everybody tries to spread you out somewhere to the Pac-12. And so um, without getting, you know, without boring people too much with how many safety, split safety looks, single safety looks, those kind of things, hopefully that gives you an idea. Um, I think they'll like the product that they see. Coach, have you looked at a video of, of Montana State? And if so, what do you think? Intentionally, no. Um, I've resisted the temptation to do that. I want to form my opinions on these young men, not about what kind of players they are, but what kind of character they have. And uh, I don't want to cloud my judgment with, well, you know, I can't tackle a lick. I want to make sure that I know who he is, and then, uh, and then my job is to coach him and improve him and not make a judgment about what happened in the past. We're moving forward. Can you give us a sense of just how the players uh, received you when, when you met with them? I think well, but you know that's uh, you know it's always you know I think I can read a room pretty good, and uh, I think they were dialed in pretty good last night. I think they liked uh, maybe the, the approach that I took, and I try to just let them know this is who I am, this is what you're going to get, and uh, over time I think it'll continue to grow in a, in a positive way. Uh, one thing I hope they know is that my door is always going to be open for them. You know I mentioned I mentioned you know Nick and and, and Nick. That's what was so awesome about those guys. It didn't matter if I was 18 years old or 44 years old. If I needed something, I could pick up the phone and call them and they had my back. And that's what I want these kids to know. And so that's going to take some time to develop, but that's the type of program that I want to run here. Just general thoughts on, on Bozeman and the community so far and how your family might be able to acclimate to town? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great place. Um, you know, we've got family that lives close and uh, 
Love the downtown area. I think the shopping's going to be fine for my daughter, right, JC? <laughs> my son loves the outdoors and uh, is excited to play for a state championship caliber high school football team. So I think we're we're very excited to be, you know, to be here in Bozeman. Your, your Montana Western connections, you, you mentioned starting there under Coach Delaney. Uh, what about that place fosters so much success in the coaching world, especially on the, on the small school level like in the state of Montana? Yeah, I, you know, you just get an opportunity to wear a lot of hats and really and really dig into real-life coaching stuff. You know, um, you know when, I was a, when I was a student assistant and then, and then, a, and then a, a graduate, an intern, or whatever you want to call it over there, I did everything. You know, we painted the fields, we did the laundry, we game planned, we ran practice. You, you, you learn to do it all. And I think when you're at a bigger school, you know, your entry level position is doing film breakdown, but you're not, you're not engaged as much. The other piece I'll tell you right now is that you're a teacher. You know, I've been, I've been in front of classrooms, you know, since I was 22 years old. And, uh, you know, having the opportunity to really refine my teaching style and my presentation style, I think is hugely important. And, and, and I, don't, I, I don't, for a second, you know, I look at it right now and I go, okay, Sonny Holland, Sonny Lubick, those are some pretty good ties to that place. And uh, certainly Mick, um, and so there's some awesome, you know, I ran into, you know, Mark, uh, Matt Lucas and his brother Mark were both good friends of mine. Matt and I were at Western at the same time. That guy's doing okay for himself at Oregon. So it's a great place. It's, it's launched a lot of uh, uh, unbelievable careers, not just in the college football ranks, but throughout the state of Montana in education. Uh, special teams has kind of been your calling card throughout your career. Is that, uh, do you see yourself kind of running that um, in addition to head coaching? Yeah, you know, the one thing that I think is unique about special teams is I get to touch the entire team. And uh, um, I think that's a way for them to see me maybe in a different role than as the head coach. You know, uh, the only time that they may see me is, you know, they're sitting waiting to go to the principal's office or if I'm addressing them in a team setting. I want them to see, you know, see me as a coach as well. And I think that not just the kicking game part of it, but how we, how we talk about principles of football, leverage, tackling, blow delivery, block escape. Those are things that I want them to hear from me, from my language, so they can uh, uh, they can kind of wrap their head around that and we can have a common language in, in, in the football world. And so, yeah, I think I'll be heavily involved in that phase. Um, as the staff develops and grows and my responsibilities grow and develop, I think we can kind of look at how that might shift. Uh, 